Well, grocery store profits were in the spotlight in Ottawa yesterday as the heads of Canada's largest grocers were grilled by a parliamentary committee. The Commons Agriculture Committee is looking into food inflation. Grocery prices were up 11.4% in January of this year compared to the same month a year ago. That's nearly doubled the overall rate of inflation, which was 5.9% in January. So the heads of Loblaw, Metro and Empire Company pushed back against accusations that they are profiting from food inflation. Most notably, we at Empire are not profiting from inflation. It doesn't matter how many times you say it, write it or tweet it. It is simply not true. The truth is we are at the end of a very long food supply chain that has economic inputs at every step and stage. On a customer's $25 grocery basket, we earn just $1 in profit. That means even if the industry had zero profits, a $25 grocery bill would still cost 24. So the claim that Canadian grocers can correct food price inflation is simply wrong. Okay, so all of us, of course, have to buy groceries or get food some way. So for a closer look at what's taking shape here, we're joined this morning by Ian Lee, Associate Professor at Carleton University in the Sprott School of Management, and Sylvain Charlebois, a food professor, Director of Agri-Food Analytics at uh, Dalhousie University. Great to speak to both of you because we've both spoken to both of you over the past weeks about this issue. Uh, Ian, I want to start with you, though. Uh, this this uh, pretty fierce pushback from the grocers about the 25% you know, growth of the prices of their inputs versus the prices on the shelves here. You've talked about how you've gone through the uh, sort of dollars and cents here. What do you make of that argument and uh, how much does that hold water? Well, first off, it was long overdue. Um, we've had all kinds of bloviating and um, non-evidence-based <clears throat> allegations, such as greedflation. I say that. I've been teaching the strategy course for 35 years. Before that, I was a banker that lent money to business and studied, oh my goodness, gross profit margin, net profit margin, cost of goods sold, ROIC. And in fact, my students study this weekly using StatsCan data evidence-based data. So what they were doing yesterday in the testimony last night, last evening, was producing and putting that data on the table. I have said repeatedly, there is no evidence of what the uh, of politicians are saying. Uh, this industry, very quickly, Nick, I've been teaching, as I said, strategy for 35 years. Mm -hmm. What's so crazy about this, these claims, is this industry is notoriously a low-profit industry and has been my entire lifetime. And I think you can tell I'm not 22. Uh, um, yep. <laughs> and so my point being that, you know, if they had gone after the pharmaceutical industry or the oil and gas industry, which do have very high margins, by the way, or banking, you know, you could say, well, you know, they got a point, maybe don't agree with them. But this is one of the lowest margin industries. In fact, I have the data from Stern School of Business, uh, all the major industries in the U.S., and they're very similar to Canada in terms of net profit margin. And grocery retailing, no surprise, no surprise at all, is down near the bottom. So they are, the NDP are pushing on a string that is not evidence-based, and the CEOs challenged it and pushed back, and it was long overdue. Okay, of course, and a lot of the data that was uh, being mentioned yesterday, of course, uh, came from the Agri-Food Analytics Lab at Dalhousie University, which, of course, Sylvain uh, heads up. So uh, let's bring you into this conversation now, Professor Charlebois. The interesting thing that came out was, was Loblaw really pushing back hard because they not only sell food, but they also sell pharmaceuticals, they sell clothing, they have a banking arm as well. Would it make more sense for them to publicly break out the kind of revenues they're making from each sector of their business so that people have a more complete understanding of what they're making on food specifically. Well, if you look at the last couple of statements coming from Loblaws, last quarter, for example, food sales uh, were up 8.4% compared to last year when the food inflation rate was well above 10% which means with food sales, they're treading water at best. And when you look at uh, shoppers' uh, results, uh, they're above, they're almost at 12%. So Loblaw's bank is really shoppers. They're making money selling lipsticks, T-shirts, and uh, precision drugs, not necessarily food. And it, it didn't come out uh, last night, unfortunately. Uh, the, the committee didn't zone in on food, food sales specifically, which was a bit of a disappointment. So is there a concern, Savannah, I'll stick with you here. Is there a concern about the situation of food and indeed? I mean, the point that uh, Galen West continues to make there was that, you know, for every $25, you know, basket of food that they're, they're only making $1. What does that say then about the state of affairs for Canadian grocers? I mean, if you're only selling food, like you said, you're treading water. What's the solution? I, I mean, is ratios 
Correct. I mean, that's basically what uh, what's going on here. Uh, I, I've always said that the challenge for Canada, not necessarily grocers, is that we don't necessarily have a competitive landscape when it comes to food distribution compared to the U.S. Margins have been steady. As Ian said, there's no evidence of greedflation whatsoever, but margins are actually double what they are in the U.S. If you look at Kroger's or Albertsons, for example, and so the answer shouldn't come from CEOs. Uh, I'm hoping that the Academy will look for ways to make Canada more competitive. We lost Target in, in, a, in a nanosecond. We lost Sears, Lowe's. Nordstrom last week announced that it was leaving Canada. We have interprovincial barriers that are really cumbersome a huge fiscal uh, regime that is really challenging. Those are the things that we need to tackle in order to make Canada a more a, a more attractive place to invest for companies mm -hmm. like Aldi and Little in the U.S. And Ian, let me bring you into the conversation because also what's come up in Ottawa, not just yesterday, but the day before when we heard from food producers as well, is the idea of a grocer's code of conduct. Would that help Canadian consumers at all? No. Uh, I mean, I, I'm an old-fashioned uh, capitalist. I believe in this thing called competition, which Sylvain was just discussing. Mm -hmm. It's one we have known for 300 years what will bring down prices, more competition. We have a competition bureau and a competition tribunal that states in the legislation passed by these parliamentarians that, par that competition is a good thing. And just to your question to, to Sylvain, I just want to jump in on that. You said, what can these grocers do if their margins are so low? Exactly what they've been doing. It's such a lousy business, and I've been saying this for years and years. That's why they're diversifying into clothing and pharmaceuticals and lipstick and shampoo, because the margins are much better on those other products. Food margins are terrible, but they're pretty good in cosmetics and the stuff that's sold at shoppers and, and, and that kind of uh, product. That's what they're doing to offset the low food margins. Okay, listen, hey, both of you gentlemen, I really appreciate the time. Ian Lee, Sylvain Charlebois, thanks so much for joining us here and we'll see if there uh, eventually ever is much more competition in the Canadian grocery sector. Thanks for the time this morning to both of you.